during the release of at least one Sonic game, you've probably heard something along the lines of, Sonic has had a rough transition to 3D. Now this is something that you've probably read since like literally Sonic's first 3D game and people will not shut up about it. Heck, while looking this up, I even found it brought up in reviews for Sonic Frontiers, which if anything just goes to prove that regardless of if you're trans, an NB, or just a 2D game franchise, it is hard to transition. But this review here says that Sonic Adventure proved that Sonic could work in a 3D space, but Wait, hold on a second. According to Wikipedia, Sonic Adventure was the first 3D Sonic game. So the question here is, what was Sonic's transition to 3D then? And depending on some semantics, there's actually a lot of answers that doesn't make this so clear cut. A lot of people point to this game when it comes to Sonic's first visit to the 3D realm, and I mean with good reason. 3D is literally in the title, and I mean, look at the box art, that screams literally 3D. But when it comes to whether or not this is Sonic's first 3D game, that's where things can get a little bit tricky because it's not exactly black and white. See, Sonic 3D Blast is an isometric game, which does a really good job of giving an impression of a 3D environment, but while using 2D sprites. 2D sprites that were made from 3D models, in a similar way that Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country was made, but still, even then, they're still just 2D sprites at the end of the day. And if we use that as our reason for this being 3D, then I guess Super Mario RPG would be Mario's first 3D game, which I'm pretty sure nobody is arguing that fact. And I don't want to say that an isometric game is 3D, otherwise we'd have to point to Sonic Labyrinth as also being a 3D Sonic game, and let's just be real here, nobody wants to point at that game. Now, there is one section though that is pretty worth talking about, and those are the special stages that are unlocked through Tails and Knuckles who you'll meet on your adventures, and they're just kind of chilling around until you pay them 50 rings and you'll find... Oh wait, hold on a second. This here's the Genesis version of the game, which wasn't in 3D. Let's switch over to the Saturn, and listen, just a quick disclaimer here. I tried real hard to get this thing to work, but man, my emulator for the Saturn was not having it, and for some reason was becoming insanely sluggish at the most random times, including the 3D segments, so I'm sorry it's gonna be a little bit jank, but it's the best I could do. After some troubleshooting, I really couldn't figure anything out. So there you go, a 3D special stage, along with a fun hand-holding ride with Knuckles through the sky, and some polygons that are so sharp they'll cut you if you're not careful around them. But here's where we get a little semantic-y. Both the Genesis and the Saturn version came out at the same time. It's clear that while they're overall quite similar games, that the Saturn version is just able to crank out those rad 3D polygons that the Genesis could not. It's like the old commercial says. Genesis does. Not do 3D, but the Saturn does. But this 3D segment is totally optional in the game, and you can play through the entire game without even touching any of the special stages. Yeah, I mean it's not the best ending or whatever, but you can still experience basically the entirety of the core of the game without ever touching a special stage. Does a game with an optional minority of the game that is a 3D segment in only one version of the game really count as a 3D game? And that's kind of where those shades of grey comes in, and it depends on where you decide to cut it. Personally, I don't think this counts as a 3D game. It's a pseudo 3D game with some 3D elements in it, but you play the majority of the game outside of a 3D space, and for that reason I really don't think I would consider it, but I can definitely understand why people would, and like I said, it just it really isn't clear cut. Sonic the Fighters, or Sonic Championship, or whatever else you want to call it depending on where you're from and where you played it, is another contestant for the title of Sonic's first 3D game. It came out the same year as 3D Blast, and Sonic the Fighters is a fully 3D Sonic game, and it's the first 3D Sonic game to feature a playable character using a gun, so I mean, take that Shadow the Hedgehog. But semantics. See, when people talk about Sonic's transition to 3D, I'm pretty sure they're mostly just talking about mainline games, and most people are talking about mainline games that came out for consoles and not arcade games, which is what Sonic the Fighters is. Sonic the Fighters would remain an arcade exclusive until 2005 with a Saturn port planned way back in 96, but that just never happened. So could we really call Sonic's first 3D game an arcade game? I mean, 
technically, yeah, because it is a fully 3D game, and it's a Sonic game. But is this the game that people are talking about when it comes to Sonic's transition into 3D? And there I'd probably have to say that no, most people aren't talking about Sonic the Fighters when it comes to Sonic's transition into the 3D space. Okay, there we go. Sonic R. So this here is a fully 3D Sonic game. It was released on a home console, and it's got some of the jankiest early 3D game controls that I've ever used, which for sure would make it a contender for a rocky transition into 3D. But again, this isn't a mainline Sonic game, and it feels a little bit unfair to compare a racing game to a platformer. It would be like talking about Mario's weird transition because all of a sudden he had Mario Kart, and then he had Mario World, and then for some reason there was Mario 64, but after Mario 64 there was a bunch of party and sports games and it was like Mario make up your mind. But those are of course just two different genres of games and I think most people are looking at Sonic's adventures and platforming, so I guess we've got no choice but to move on. Sonic Adventure. Okay, now that's the one that according to this review proved that Sonic could work in a 3D realm. And I mean, listen, it's fully 3D, it's on a home console, it's a mainline game. So I guess like this would be the most definitive version, right? This is our guy. And I don't think that we could really use any of the previous semantics that we've seen to make an argument that this game isn't Sonic's first step into 3D. However, I would say that this might be Sonic's first big step into 3D, but everything before this definitely worked as little baby steps into the pond that is 3D. And I think overall those games really helped establish Sonic Adventure as a 3D game, and if anything, you could really understand why people think that he's had a rocky transition into the realm of 3D when there were just so many 3D games with such varying quality to them. Now, of course, I can see why also people would think that Sonic Adventure would be a poor contender for Sonic's first jump into 3D. It is pretty jank when it comes to the controls, but it's like that early 2000s level of jank. I think something that a lot of people tend to forget is that every early 3D platformer had pretty much just varying levels of awkwardness when it came to playing them. Like, as much as people love Mario 64, it's no doubt a pretty clunky game gameplay-wise, and it definitely had some rough edges that it needed to smooth out, and I don't just mean the polygons. Heck, even by the time Mario's Sunshine came out, Mario was still pretty far from perfect. Mario often felt like he was slipping around on those gripless shoes. So, that there is the end of this video exploring Sonic's quote-unquote rocky transition into the realm of 3D. And why, in my opinion, there's really four possible answers that are all varying levels of valid when asked about Sonic's first 3D game. If you've watched the video this far along, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this wild journey and... Wait, what? Oh, no 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 no. See, that's not the end at all. Now, due to semantics, none of these games are actually 3D. Let me explain by taking a look at Shrek. Shrek is undoubtedly a 3D model, but when projected on the big screen, well, that's a 2D movie. It wasn't until Shrek 3D The Adventure Continues that I experienced a true 3D Shrek as a kid. And what exactly made that 3D? Well, it was those 3D glasses. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, Sonic Generations for the PS3, which was the only 3D compatible game with 3D TVs, was the only 3D Sonic game to ever come out. No, I will not be answering any further questions. Of course, a big thank you to Virtual Scallop for letting me know about Sonic Generations and how it was the first 3D Sonic game. I really appreciate it. And if you want your name to be shouted out ever in the future, feel free to leave me any kind of recommendations that you'd like me to look at, anything that I might find interesting, uh, or just simply subscribe and involve yourself with the community, and who knows, maybe one day I'll call you out just like Lucky Virtual Scallop.